Hey everybody. I'm so glad you could join me today. I'm here. Well, first of all, maybe I should introduce myself. My name is Tish Weber, but I write under the pen name of Tish Mac Weber. What you see beside me is an image of my first book, which I'm going to be reading a chapter from for you today. The reason I'm doing this is to give a behind the scenes explanation for where you are right now. This is my book world. And in this book that you see beside me, I have written a chapter about the five cats that were a part of my family and have gone on to the other side of the rainbow bridge. I imagine they're here in this space with us. And to be able to fill you in on what I imagine might be happening as they wait for me to join them on the other side of the rainbow bridge, I thought I'd read the chapter in my book that relates to that very thing. So let's go. Chapter nine. Imagining what happened on the other side of the Rainbow Bridge. Well, hello there. I see you made it. Rascal had just entered the room. He was looking at his long lost lady. Mistletoe. When he greeted her, he didn't know why she had left. But he was purring up a storm as she entered the room. Mistletoe just gave him a once over and walked over to the window. She daintily leapt in one fluid motion from the floor to the windowsill and looked down upon him. Hello yourself, rascal, she replied. He was going to have to do more than just purr to get a nap in beside her like they used to do. She turned her back to the window and perched in a lovely warm ray of sunlight. She squinted her green kitty eyes at him. She learned a long time ago that it was never wise to turn her back on him. She would have that nap that she longed for, but he was going to have to work for it. I have so much to tell you, Missy. I... Well, you see, after you were gone, I was lonely. I was rather pathetic without you. The people brought home another. Mistletoe flicked her tail in annoyance. It had been a long time since anyone had called her Missy. It was so immature. Go on. She put icicles in her voice. It was a skill she had perfected after their separation. When you are ripped from your home and your love, it tends to leave one's heart cold, cold as ice. Well, um, her name is Lucy. She is nothing like you, and she was never really into me. Not like you and me at all. She is aloof and way too independent. I mean, what self-respecting cat likes to hang out in the human litterless room? He opened his golden yellow cat eyes a little wider as Lucy herself entered the room. I heard that rascal and I am not aloof. I like my throne room very much, thank you. Oh. I see she has arrived. The infamous Missy. Lucy trotted into the room. She surveyed it for escape routes, then leapt to the highest point that she could climb to. Once Lucy settled on her perch, she not only sat in symmetrical perfection, but then curled her tail around herself, like a little tabby striped barrier against the rest of the room. She too had green eyes, but hers had more yellow intelligence behind them. She was a queen, and she knew it. 
her eyes locked with mistletoes, deeper, more seductive eyes, and the staring contest began. Bang! Scrambling paws were heard approaching the room. Not four paws, but eight. Simba, the older beige tabby with mid-length fur, came running through the doorway. He abruptly stopped and sat up on his hind legs. He barely had time to start sucking on his front paw when Dude, the flame point Himalayan, cat with the most prominent blueberry eyes a cat had ever possessed, rounded the corner at top speed into the room. He narrowly avoided using his new friend Simba as a way to stop by sliding sideways around him right into the wall. Dude, as usual, was confused. He finally found another cat that wanted to run and play with him, but he often stopped when entering a room every time just to take in the sights. Rascal looked relieved that the comedy relief had arrived. Maybe they would get him out of the hot seat with the ladies. He was never so happy to see his buddies enter a room as he was in that moment. Simba was utterly oblivious to the other cats in the room. He was taking in the room while Simba was sucking his paw. He could not explain the feeling he got each time he left a room. But Simba always had a niggling little thought behind his ears that something was different when he returned every time. So he always stopped upon entering a room and took a careful look at everything to see what had changed since he had last been there. Dude, who just wanted to run and play, started running again. Sometimes this would break Simba's concentration long enough to make him run with him. It was not to be the case this time, though. Simba had found something was indeed different. At least three things were not there the last time he had been in this room. Try as he might, Dude could not entice Simba to play and run again. He snorted and walked into the middle of the room. He sprawled on the floor in a sighing floof. Interesting, Simba said in a bit of a muffled voice. His paw was still in his mouth. After all, he was right to check the rooms. This was a remarkable change since the last time he was here. There were three other cats along with himself and Dude. Rascal, being the cool cat, with his tuxedo markings creating a dapper ambience, ambience, looked right at Simba, who he also hadn't seen for quite some time, and lifted his chin to him in greeting. It was a thing Rascal did to welcome everyone, cats and people alike. He usually squinted his eyes a little when he did this, and sometimes meowed, depending on to whom he was lifting his chin. Simba blinked. Rascal noticed the ladies were taking in the new cats in the room. They did not continue their stare down any longer. Rascal closed his eyes and thanked the almighty cat in the stars for the pause of the tension in the room. He settled in for the show. Dude and Simba had never met before today, and they were hilarious to watch. They were like two kittens in a patch of catnip all the time. Running, playing, and just being the silliest cats anyone had ever seen. It was also nice to have them entertain each other, so Rascal could be the lady's cat he was always meant to be. Mistletoe was just about to say something when the loudest, rumbliest, purring engine emerged from the center of the room. My, but that was quite a motor that blue-eyed fluffy cat had. It took her off her game plan momentarily. She checked her front paws to make sure they were ready for defense if necessary. 
Dude spied a string dangling from a height in the other doorway. He sat up and quickly tore out of the room to attack it. That dangling piece of string offended his sensibilities, if he had any at all. He was compelled to investigate it. Lucy silently watched from her peak. She was observing the interactions, so pedestrian. She was meant to rule these cats, and she would by sheer will. Mistletoe incredulously asked, What or who was that? Dude, said the other three cats in unison, which caused Dude to run back into the room. It really was the best way to get anywhere, to run. It also kept his fur looking light and fluffy. What? he asked. He looked around the room. Simba was still sitting near the door, sucking on his paw. Such a weird habit that was. Rascal was looking a little different now that he stopped to look at him. It was like he was trying to impress someone. He certainly didn't want to impress dude. Rascal was Rascal. He did not have any fluff to his fur at all. He didn't know why he thought he was such a player. Lucy never gave him the time of day. Wait a minute, where did Lucy go? As Dude started hunting for Lucy, which was one of his favorite pastimes, he saw something out of the corner of his eye. That was one benefit of having such large eyes. He caught more things if he stopped running long enough to look. It was in the window, just the tiniest of movements. Whoa! There was a brand new cat here. He immediately ran in her direction to see if she wanted to play. Smack. Right on the nose, too. What is it with the ladies and their overwhelming sense of having to be proper all the time? It was no fun. No fun at all. Achoo! Dude sneezed. He really was not happy that she got him in the nose. He gave her his scariest look by squinting up his eyes and trying to make his fur fluffier around his neck. Mistletoe really didn't quite know what to make of this dude character. But that look on his face was the oddest thing she had ever seen. Which caused her to break into a fit of kitty giggles. Dude, meet Missy, the love of my life. Rascal said quite smugly. Mistletoe, please. I use my full name now. Rascal. She was really playing hard to get, and she was really going to make him earn his way back into her melting heart. Want to play, Mistletoe? Dude always wanted to run and play. Mistletoe winced and shook all over. There's another kitten that refused to grow up here? She asked incredulously. What do you mean? Dude asked, as if it wasn't a permanent look. He wore most of the time already. He would have looked like he was confused. Simba always wants to play. Why don't you ask him? She tried to avoid answering the question with what she hoped was a clever deflection. It didn't work. He stopped. Now I'm asking you. You look like you can run really fast. I will start. See if you can catch me, okay? Dude abruptly turned 180 degrees and sprinted off. His feet could be heard echoing down the hallway. Is that really a cat or is it an elephant? Mistletoe asked after he bolted from the room. He's a cat, said another female voice from the heightened perch of the Queen Lucy. He has always landed like an elephant with every step of his paws. Simba dropped to all four paws and scrambled off after Dude. He seemed content to be aware of the changes that had happened and wondered what would be different when he came back later. That left Rascal and his two lady cats in the room alone again. Lucy purposefully came down from her perch, looking as if she had done it a million times before, because she had. A true ruler must always look down upon her subjects. She walked over to the window. From an equal height, she locked eyes with mistletoe again. 
I will leave the long lost lovers to become reacquainted after such a long time of being apart. Lucy sauntered out the door with her tail straight up in the air. Then there were but two cats left in the room. Alone at last, my love. Rascal started purring again as he beckoned to her with his eyes. Mistletoe refused to move from the windowsill. She had a point to make and she was not going to make it easy for him. There had been other cats in his life since she had seen him last and she was not playing second fiddle to any of them. Lucy seems quiet, she said. It was the only good thing that she could think of to say about her rival. She also thought she was stuck up and an idiot to not be madly in love with her rascal. Maybe that made her more of a fool herself because she was letting her heart rule her motions rather than her wits. He stretched out on the blanket he was laying on. He never took his eyes off his missy, only to blink. She still remembered dominant, she still remained, pardon me, dominant over his heart, even after all of this time. Just come here, he said, followed with an elevated purr. He was using all of his charms and it was becoming impossible for Mistletoe to resist them. She jumped daintily on the floor. She had always been petite and very delicate looking. She used her catwalk to her advantage as she slowly crossed the room. Rascal lifted his chin in appreciation. This was the moment he had been waiting for since their separation years before. She walked up to the blanket and they touched noses. Rascal could always make her tail curl and he did it again. She looked him in the eyes and asked in a whisper, did you mean it? Am I still the love of your life? There wasn't any other cat that stole your heart in all of this time? I meant every word, Missy. It was always you and me, no matter how far apart we were. My heart still beats for you and only you. Rascal gave her cheek a lick with his raspy tongue to follow his words of devotion. The last crystal of ice dissolved from her heart. She melted into the blanket with him and settled in for the best catnap of her life with her love's paws hugging her close to his heart. So that's chapter nine. It really needed a place to exist here virtually. And the reason I created this space was to have a world for these cats to be in while they wait for me. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me read this chapter of this book. When you go into Kumo space, it's not this big unless you zoom in, but you can see the book that's beside me on the table that's beside me and the deck area of the cottage by the sea on the other side of the rainbow bridge. I hope we'll bump together in here and you never know what I'll be planning next for this space. So I would definitely check back often and see if you can spot the difference, maybe without sucking on your paw. See you soon. Thanks for watching.